wanting to do this video for a while. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about amplitude modulation, but the real reason why I want to do that is because I also want to discuss high pass filters and one of the reasons why I use them and why I use them so much. Um, so amplitude modulation is where you have signals that are you're receiving or, or outputting simultaneously. And so we get complex sound information uh, from these multiple signals being played together. And, and what they do is those two signals playing together then affect the amplitudes of essentially each other, create a single wave that has now varying amplitude or modulated amplitude. Um, and we're hearing that as an output. Now, granted, we hear this to really intense degrees in music or even in the sound, just like listening to my voice, listening to the words that I'm saying uh, is a really complex version of this. So we're going to look at a really scaled down, simplified version of what uh, amplitude modulation is and in and, and some of the ways that it can affect our product, our projects and what I do to deal with that and, and why I do that. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to look in here. I've set up operator to play a 55 hertz signal. Actually, let's go ahead and look at it at just a, a lower frequency first. So we're going to look at this at 27 and a half hertz, uh, just so we can really see sort of this difference between what we can hear and what we can't within the range. And this is part of the question that sometimes people have about low passing stuff, especially when we're in the really low frequencies, like what's the purpose or what does it do? So first thing we're gonna do here is I have a note here, it's 27 and a half hertz, it looks like this. We can see it in the EQ. It's this nice root note right here at 27 and a half hertz. There's some visualization issues that make it look a little bit less perfect. There are probably some imperfections coming out of the synthesizer itself, coming out of operator. Um, the other thing we can do here is I have this oscilloscope here so we can visualize kind of what this signal looks like in a little bit different way. So we can see what the frequency is here on our EQ readout. We can also look at this oscilloscope and look at, see what this shape of the repeating wave is that's going through here. And so what we see here is just a nice clean sine wave. I haven't muddied this up at all. If we changed it into like a triangle wave, then this would look like a triangle wave and this output would look slightly different. But it shows a sign note because they're so clean, because they don't create a bunch of extra harmonics in the same way that some other waves do. So we can just kind of see what's going on. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna add in an additional note, an additional signal, sound signal at 15 hertz. The thing is, we can't really hear this for the most part, in fact, depending on your speaker system or how you're listening to this, you might not have been able to even hear that 27 and a half hertz. I can hear it with my volume cranked pretty high in my headphones. My headphones can pump out some relatively low frequencies pretty well. But like if I had earbuds in, I wouldn't even be able to hear that at all. And then um, here's the 15 hertz now. So we'll see kind of how this sounds. I can feel some pressure, light pressure in my ears, but I'm not getting sound sound. Like my brain's not processing the sound. That pressure is probably really just on the inside of my ear, not on the actual in the canal and get into the eardrum as much. And so like nothing's really picking that up in terms of a sound uh, that's going through there. And so that's true. They, they say that the human ear, we really don't usually process too much below 20 hertz. But if I play those together, you might think, oh, well, I can hear the one signal, not the other. So then it should just sound like this A. And that's true-ish. If you can hear this, then we can kind of hear these two things separately. So what I'm going to do is play that, that, or I guess this is a lower A note, this 27 and a half hertz, uh, along with the 15 hertz. So I'll introduce that second signal as we go. And we can see it show up in here. And now we can see this sort of, it looks all animated right now. Um, this sort of like warbly effect, this warping of the wave itself. And if I pull it back out, it goes back to the normal wave. It goes back to this root frequency here and it looks the way it was. So there's a couple things that are going on here. One is we're seeing this motion, this movement on the oscilloscope. Part of that is just the scope itself. It can't quite zero in on what this period looks like for this frequency before it repeats again. So it's having a hard time finding a nice like holding still snapshot of the wave. And so it's instead giving us these kind of funky uh, views of it. The other thing you might notice with this is when they play at once, you might hear sort of a little bit of like 
soft vibrato in that A note that is getting sort of louder and quieter slowly over time, and that has a little bit lower frequency. Um, so you might hear that sort of like rumbling or, or like I said, warbling, that little really, really low frequency vibrato uh, in there. You might not. In these low frequencies, it's harder to kind of pick that up. So let's move this frequency up more within a range to 55 hertz. Hopefully this will sound fine through whatever you're listening to this on, and, and I'll be able to hear this more as well. So 55 hertz by, by itself, nice clean sine wave looks like this. You hear that just cranking through the, the speakers now. Still a nice clean wave. Same thing happens though if we introduce the lower frequency. So now we get this more warbling here. These are further apart, and so our brain, when we get that contrast in frequency, our brain's going to have an easier time picking out that higher frequency that we want to hear and ignoring some of the um, amplitude modulation, that sort of vibrato feel that's going on in between those. But even there, it's still kind of hard to hear the difference, right? Get A note. A note with the subharmonic in there or with the added the amplitude modulation, the added lower frequency that's outside of what we can hear. So even with that, it's still kind of hard to hear the difference between those two. So let's look at what the difference looks like in another way. So one way we can look at this is I've just thrown that A signal on a graph so we can look at it visually through a graphing calculator online. And uh, what I've set up here is just different amplitudes if I wanna change the amplitudes, and then um, different frequencies. So this is a 55 Hertz uh, graph displayed visually, so it's another way for us to look at this. And if we wanted to, we can even see what that 15 Hertz looks like, it would look more like this. And so if they were side by side, we have these two different notes that look something like this. We have this 55 Hertz frequency in red, the, this, the 15 Hertz frequency uh, sine wave in blue, and, and those are now, we can view them kind of simultaneously together. But here's the thing, is when they're playing simultaneously, we only have one pair of ears, so we hear them both as that one signal that comes through. So we can visualize that as well by just adding these two signals together in our graph, and we get something that looks like this now when they play together. And so even visually, hopefully we can see some, some a couple changes right out the gate. One of the things is I think we should be able to clearly see that the original signal, the 55 hertz A note, is different than this composite wave now that we get when we add in those 15, that 15 hertz signal that we can't hear by itself, but now we can hear the way that it uh, sounds with the 55 hertz. So it sounds different. So the amplitude modulation that we're seeing here is this. Notice that they all have the same height, like they never go above, in this case, one for our, our amplitude or our gain that comes through here. But when we add in that extra note, there is more signal, there's more energy that's coming into our ears or through my DAW or, or out of our speakers. And, and we get something like this. And so notice that the, the highest peaks are now higher than what they were when I was playing just the eight. So now this sound is louder. Our, our DAW is gonna interpret these signals as louder signals with more gain because now we've added these two together. And we notice that this amplitude changes over time. So before we had this nice amplitude, it was always going to peak of one, peak of one, peak of one, peak of one for all of it, just forever, as long as we play the note. And the new note now, it's at certain times, it might hit a high of two or a high of below one. So now this is a little bit quieter peak. This is an even quieter peak. This is just louder to the other side. As that speaker goes, there's an equilibrium point and that your speaker is going to get pushed up a certain amount or pulled down a certain amount. So this is what we mean by amplitude modulation is now the amplitude changes. It's being modulated. Um, I would say that this amplitude is being modulated by both of these signals or all of the signals being added together because if we change the order that we do in them and it's not going to change the sound, it's not going to change the way the modulation happens. But we might also consider this is in, in producing, there's any number of other reasons why these lower signals might be introduced into a sample or track. 
uh, that aren't me doing it intentionally. Uh, and, and, and maybe I do it intentionally for other reasons too. But so what will happen here is that we can see we want this 55, but this 15 hertz is now getting involved in the mix and uh, modulating the amplitude that we do want. So sometimes people might think about this directionally, but additions, commutatives, so really they just... So part of the reason why I do this, why I high pass this, is so that I get the sound that I want. So if I want, sorry, if I want the 55 hertz, but I'm getting this composite sound, which includes this additional uh, amplitude modulation, and I don't want it modulating the amplitude so it doesn't sound different to me, I want the sound that I wanted, then I can just filter out that 15 hertz. So one of the things we can see here is that if I introduce a high pass filter now between these, cuts most of that lower frequency out and enough so that my effects, my visualizer, all think I'm just dealing with that 55 hertz now. It also sounds like the 55 hertz that I was going for more or less. So messier, louder, not quite so loud, a little bit cleaner sound. So if I have a glitch break that's just spanning, say, two measures and has 30 samples in it, that is a lot of that's not just two signals. That is a lot of different signals that also might individually have all of their own lower frequencies or subharmonics that are getting thrown into this mix that I have to now deal with. So there's one big reason why I high pass so many things, especially my individual one hit samples that are coming from any of my breaks. The other reason why this amplitude modulation can be an issue has a lot more to do with the amplitude piece of that really the gain or the loudness and so one of the ways that this uh i run into this one of the places i run into this the most is with dynamic effects so like a compressor or a limiter or a gate for example so we're going to look at a limiter just to kind of see one of the things that happens here so clean signal uh, before I filter it, just 55 degrees by itself, I can turn on this limiter and where I have the limiter set up right now is it's just the threshold, that ceiling is slightly above what the amp output is currently for this, um, for this signal. But if I introduce that other signal now, our amplitude has changed. There's more energy. So one of the ways we'll see that here is the area covered in gray is now larger. So that's more signal that's being processed by our DAW and by our effects. We can see that visually that way. We saw it in the graph as the amplitude gets higher. Let's look at that signal now. The limiter doesn't have to do much work. Now we're gonna introduce the new signal and it's gonna increase the gain slightly as well. Just a little bit, not a ton. There's a little bit of auto gain compensation built into this synthesizer, which helps address that some, but now we get this. And so you might also hear some like, that's kind of like a flapping sound as it's cutting in. It's a really fast sort of change and we can even see it here. Um, uh, well, we can see why it's happening here. This is actually the limiters doing it sort of in the opposite direction that we see this happening or in opposite time with that. But as the signal goes up, then the limiter tries to kick in and clamp down on the sound. So it lowers the gain and then it says, oh, it's below the threshold now. So it lets it go and then it gets louder and says, oh, we need to lower this. And so that's another thing that will happen is, is we're running all of these signals through different tracks, through buses, through parallel processing, you have all these dynamic effects like limiters and compressors and whatnot that are then taking in all this signal. And so if I want this to go away, I don't want that limiter to have to work as hard and making that weird popping sound in with my project, pop that in, limiter doesn't have to work anymore, cleaner sound. So it all sounds a little bit better. So even though we don't hear the 15 hertz, we hear what the 15 hertz is doing in various ways. And when we high pass that 15 hertz out of this signal, then it gets rid of some of those things that it's doing. Now, this is a good time for me to kind of pause and, and make a little aside or, 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 or give you all a caveat. We, we use amplitude modulation. It makes sounds more interesting. The same sound wave all the time, sine wave 
all the time at one note often isn't very interesting. It's the changes. And so we want those dynamics. That's interesting to our brain and to our ears. And so amplitude modulation is the way that folks do that. That's why you hear things about ring mod. Um, ring mod is just a particular um, method of creating amplitude modulation. And so uh, people will use ring mods or amplitude modulation to create different effects. Sometimes if I want, say, a messier kick because I want it to cut through more, this will create more regular harmonics, not just um, dealing with the subharmonics. And sometimes I'll let some of those subs signals through so that it affects what we do here via amplitude modulation on some of those. Um, in those really low frequencies, though, I would suggest just being cautious with what you do with those. Um, or if you're just like, I want chaos in my low end you know i just want an exploded booty all over my project there are that could be fun and you could do that uh but otherwise like <laughs> these low frequencies uh make a mess pretty quick and um so that's another reason why i'll deal with these filtering is so that it doesn't mess up what my intent is with some of my dynamic processing that I'm doing in a track and also to just dealing with some of the volume issues that come up. Like the other way we could deal with this, if if I only had an issue with the volume, but I wasn't concerned about the amplitude modulation is I could just decrease the gain back here or at any point along the chain before it gets to the limiter so that I don't have that process. I could just give myself more headroom. And so that would work as well. Um, but these things combined, you can now see hopefully why uh, if I we can notice this much difference with just two signals with very clean sine waves put together, why with messier signals and with a lot of different samples or many different tracks and lots of different dynamic effects, why I might want to cut a lot of that stuff out so that there's a lot less of those artifacts, noise, warbling, popping, all those things showing up in my mix, in my project. And so that is the main reason why I high pass so many things. And that's inspired by or because of this phenomenon of amplitude modulation that can show up even when we're not intending for it to show up in our projects. <laughs>